What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his gap toothed mouth shaking. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is. This solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dras? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should. I... I lost. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dras. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor bee. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left, wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the Phasmid even. If it did, this is incredible. The plastic cake flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Old age and shock. The appearance of the Fasmid in conjunction with the stress of the arrest. He spent his entire life here. For him to live would be... We should think about getting back to the mainland. To get help. He'll be safe here. If we don't take too long. I see him. This feels familiar somehow. Insulindian citizens' militia. It's the official name of the Communards army. The black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful lot like. It does. The RCM may descend from the ICM. It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachol West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. A mediocre athlete would pant from dragging around his body on a busted crutch. But not you. You're thinking about politics with blood dripping down your thigh. This is better preserved than the others. You can still read the sign. No, an upside-down star. 
with its horns in the sky, the symbol of the commune. No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sea. After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Freighter. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away, birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. The flock of quail departs. Now more than a hundred meters away, a hundred and two, a hundred and five. On the islet, there is almost no wind, just the light movement of air through the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline, long dried leaves chafing against each other, like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major work. A silent hiss, Sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. The faraway roar of the city, distant like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand. The low tide filtered through its grains, a bird tending to its feathers. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow. A big building. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There is very little there. The air cossets flowers on the meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. Bulrushes motionless. A jitter. A sound impatient to happen, but not yet in this world. You hear some kind of limb fidget, producing an imperceptible tick. No. It's just your imagination. You can't hear such things. Yes? It is. Is that why we are stopping? The lieutenant nods in silence. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's. We are done here. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer, the sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Look what the tide brought in. Parry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? That's right. And you're bleeding. We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Fuck it. Let's not get into that. Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstrom. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicomar. And this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special Consultant Trent Heidelstam, Petrol Officer Judith Minot. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisoragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island, 
where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Letting the lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in? Um... I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant. It's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid. What an interest in Monica. You. Shit kid, that's you. Maybe you've deserved it. The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Um, and the uh, people on the street helped us too, with your whereabouts. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. Yes, I'm Tran Heilerstam. I never said I wasn't Tran Heilerstam. Mikael? Mikael is my son. No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He's smart. Let's move on. Yeah, major crimes unit under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude, Trunt fucking Heidelstam, and Guillaume Bibi. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bibi is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left, because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient petrol officer are still here. And Trump, because I'm forcing him to stay. Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We're shit here now, Harry. Because of you. The 41st isn't... God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we are cramping your style. You're detective god. Fuck everything. All will burn. Detect or die. It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Oh, you think it was cool? You saying that? Aesthetic somehow? 
You were crying when we got here. Breaking things. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss, so we fucked off. Like you told us to. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, hell, and so on. As displayed in a station call, our interactions with him and... I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? He is. He's getting better. And I can confirm that he drank a lot of alcohol prior to it happening. I believe he drank. People do that, especially this one. What they don't do is forget their whole life because of drinking. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other, when we looked into that mural. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trump. Thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. For now, I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the potty, or do we need to get him on a disability pension? Now, nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Yeah, yeah, just stand there. It's cool. No, now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? So refreshing. It just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property. That's coming out of everyone's facelift. <sighs> it doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Juggle the badge for a second, unsuccessfully, and it lands on the ground, some two meters away. Ouch! You strained your elbow trying to catch that stupid thing. Damn it. He found it. He found it, Jean. It's his badge. And your gun? As if having your badge and gun are natural states, 
not achievements. Hugh, he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. Well, you let the suspect escape. Glacier something. Because you were too drunk to assess our flight risk. We've read the reports. You know Kitsuhagis. We know. Sure, if it's part of your master plan. Let's not even get into the other suspect, the one who shot herself in the head. Another detail, or the fact that you're Everard Claire's little peony now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff, that's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the six people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his own life. He was shot, not once, but twice. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Don't make this harder for yourself. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. He thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. You spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? On Lieutenant Yeufretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the last gun, also losing his badge, that's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. Then there's the self-flagellation issue. He likes to apologize, profusely, making it sound like he's guilty of at least first-degree murder. It's not a good communication strategy for an officer. It's... it's just strange, especially in light of his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a true blue moralist, a man of the center, not prone to political outbursts, which is commendable but also at odds with his behavior. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective, one of the best I've seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him everything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart off. Yeah, it was what it was. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? 
The killer did not seem to be aware of the Phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. I must say this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire out the drunk. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in the boardwalk. Drunk. The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, Detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. Lilianovich. A revolutionary matronym. The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms, Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lillian, his Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revashov. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trout. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years, 70-something? A strange psychosexual fascination. The result of spending all this time in solitude on the islands of this bay, and trauma too. He himself gave a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have a sniper's nest with full view of the room in which the mercenary died, right on the island, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way more. I've never doubted you can pull yourself together and work in bouts. Bouts don't last. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. It is bad. Even you can smell it. Chin up. Keep focusing on the positives here. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued color of a female. And... The nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, I thought. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting males. It must be robust if it can move a helmet with its limbs. As in cloning itself? <laughs> what makes you think so? Mm-hmm. Then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the pathogenetic mutation. That makes sense, yes. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. Yes, but also reed-colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. 
After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the Insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This is science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it, you're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead, or no. I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. So I have to. Jude? Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. The man looks westward, impatiently. Jingling his car keys in his pocket. Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coran. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. The fact that you don't seem to know what homosexuality is. Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. God, even this javelin throwing freak here. In your 20s or late 20s, you've really let yourself go since then. Yes, you tell Jim in Couron. I believe that's the term. Tao Jim at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. Kuro is just east of Jamro. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field or the sports building. High school. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvie. His smoke suggests barely contained laughter. The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. You. Every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She. Leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries. And incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest-to-God gym teacher. It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it, too. Really maximized the damage. Dora something. Dora Ingerlund? Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois. No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. God, I don't know. Six years ago? She was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it? What the hell is wrong with you? No, it was six. Like, ancient. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora Ingerlund really tore you a new one. A big one. Incredibly bangable? She was incredibly fuckable. A beautiful bourgeois woman. Wayfish. Like a welkin, basically. Snow welkin. Blonde welkin. Heartbreak welkin. Pain welkin. I've only seen a picture. But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, 
The sun is going down. It's time to go home. I think she taught in the Académie des Arts, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle-class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit, not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. No. You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. Us? We're the bloody murder station. Haven't you heard? We're the bad guys. No one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You are just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station, and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Mac the Torso Torson and Chester McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me. Things are shaky as it is. They are damn iconic though, Torson and McLean. Yeah, not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We're garbage. God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. There's also a lot of outside help involved, not only me. Other losers too. He's anything but a loser. Although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. Ptolemy Price? He's the son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory, shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. He means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on this coast. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. Okay, it's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and coffee corner. A lot of good people work there. Hard. Every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershall. Faubourg, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only has us. The press will blow over. Jamrock is lucky to have you. And it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113. Tabernacle Road in Jamrock, remember? Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. She is going to be over the moon. Watch out, or she'll faint. Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. 
Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... Would fit him. I'm crazy enough. Can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattered? You're yet no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the Harbour. And we also have a huge caseload, Lutnan. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He's really considering it. Good. Fuck it. Let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20-minute drive to Jamrock. Under the evening sky, the great district turns on its lights. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls inside. Fire traps as far as the eye can see, from Main Street to Precinct 41, atop the motorway. To Boogie Street, forking into the snow-swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint jerome a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vicmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Gottlieb looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomny Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the RCM. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minot? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? <laughs>